You two are living together, aren't you? Uh, Mom, it's, it's not what you think. Really. Now, Becky had some problems at one of the dorms she was living in, so now she's just kind of staying here until she finds a place. That's all. No biggie. It's the only place she had to go. You're that friendless. Um, I... No, <laughs> Mom, I... come on. I mean, a girl would have to be desperate to live in a place like this. Russ, I don't believe you. How long have you been here? One month and counting. Becky. I moved in because your son suggested it, and I thought it was a great idea. And I don't intend to leave. What you are doing, the both of you, is disastrous. And I will not tolerate it. Well, we love each other. She lies even better than you do. Oh, come on, Mom. She's got to leave just as soon as she finds another place. Oh, stop it. Drive me back to the hotel. This is sick. Mom. Mom, wait up. Come on. You are not... Don't you touch me! Your music's probably killing these things anyway. Would you just sit down for a minute? Come on. I haven't sat down since I got in this apartment. I've been so worried that, that maybe I'm not good enough for you. Or, or that you're going to get tired of me. That Russ, living with you has been a one crash course in neurotic anxiety. And guess what? I failed! Leaving. I'm not going to leave you alone. Nobody's going in. You want to hate me, don't you? I mean, that would make it so easy. If I wasn't so considerate and so understanding, then you could, you could just hate me, and you could claim that you're the poor, misguided, misunderstood mother. Wouldn't that be great? Why don't you just stop it, huh? You make me look like a fool in front of Lauren. You tell everybody that, that we're going to live together because Becky hasn't resettled yet. Where'd you learn such a big word, you dumb jock? Becky, you are not leaving me. Oh, one more thing. You want to help me put away our collapsible uh, stage? This is where I've given you some of the best play acting of my life. You are not leaving, you hear it? I am! That's good. Okay, go ahead, hit me. You want to, don't you? It's the only way you know how to solve anything, isn't it? You might as well, because you hate me. So die with it! Let me die! Okay, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I seem like I hate you sometimes. It's because I need you. I don't want to need you. I want to want you. I just want to love you just to love. Sometimes. Oh, sometimes I think I say I love you just because you're all I have. I do, huh? She's not gonna talk. All right. 
So what? I love you, and I'm going to stay with you. Russ, there's, there's a lot more to this than you know. No, there isn't. She's my mom, and I love her, but you're more important. This? Who are you kidding? Hey, Scotty! Hey, I didn't hear you come in, man. Well, oh, your mother let me in as she was leaving. Well, then, pull up a seat there. Hey, what's this you're doing? You bringing homework now? Well, I've been doing this on my own. The less Sam has to teach me, the easier it is on the two of us. Oh? I thought I might be able to rescue you from all this. Have you thought about my offer? Yeah, I haven't thought about anything else. That's heavy stuff, being the news director of a TV station. Finally a chance to show the world how it should be done. Then you do it. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Scott, TV is really a rat race. I've seen it turn well-informed men and educated men into mad dogs. And you know, believe it or not, our old news director was once a nice guy. Oh, come on, Gene. That's ambition. It's in every business. It has nothing to do with television exclusively. It does. It's power. But you can handle that. Yeah, but I don't know if I can handle being surrounded by men who can't handle it. Then you don't want the job. I didn't say that. Well, what are you telling me? Oh, it's Sam, isn't it? Quit answering your own questions. You turned down a golden opportunity like this, better money, more prestige, just so you wouldn't have to leave Samantha Marshall. Scott, I don't care about the money. I don't care about the prestige. You know me better than that. Look, Jimmy's going to be in college in five years. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to be the first black news director in the state. Hey, you're pressuring me, Scotty. I... Are you sure you've thought enough about yes, this? Yes, 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 I'm sure I thought enough about this. And it's not because of Sam. I know that I could leave that job and still see her. I know that, but she... Man, she's in a bind. Between you and me, Carpenter is more than she bargained for, okay? Morning. Good morning. Did you sleep all right? No. As a matter of fact, I tossed and turned all night. Russ, we have to solve this problem now. Okay. Can we do it without yelling? I haven't yelled. You have. And that scares me, because you were never like that before. Oh, come on, Mom. I haven't exactly been the perfect picture of the loving son. Well, you were a lot closer than what I see now, and that's that girl's doing. You hardly even know her. It's the situation, I know. Mom, she is a good girl. She's been through a lot with me, and she's willing to go through even more. She was Lori's roommate. Great. She stole you from Lori. No, she didn't steal me from Lori. You know, she was in love with me all the time I was going out with Lori, and she kept her mouth shut. She got Lori cleared, and she's been a pretty darn good friend to me, too. She was just waiting for the right time, oh. and she found it. The two of you had a couple of drinks. One lonely night, things got out of hand, and she's been hounding you she ever since. She has not been hounding me ever since. But the rest is right, isn't it? Okay, Mom, you want to talk about hounding, huh? What about you? It's called worrying about my son. Oh, Mom, come on. You and Becky are the two most important women in my life. Is it so much to ask that you get along? Mom, if I'm smart enough to know how great you are, don't you think I'm smart enough to know how to pick another woman just as well? But that's just it, Russ. I don't get the feeling you picked her. She picked you. What, what do you think? I'm a beggar that, that I take who takes me? Oh, you are a strong, handsome man, and she's not good enough for you. It's that simple. No, it's not. There's more to it than just that. See, I know Becky, and I know that I'm in love with her, but that didn't matter to you, did it? Well, when you first met her, you'd already made up your mind. She's not for you, Russ, and this living together, well, I don't care who This is just she... one big ugly flashback for you, isn't it? You and my father. Well, Mom, I'm not gonna make the same mistake you did, I promise. I've never thought of you as a mistake. You don't have to talk about these things anymore. I'm over it. You're never over it. 
Well, maybe I'm not strong enough for you. Or maybe all my strength has gone into my schoolwork. I don't know. It's just, it's just I need Becky. And catching her at the dorm now and then or having lunch with her at the cafeteria, Mom, that just don't cut it. I want her with me when I come home, when I'm studying. And yes, when I go to bed at night, I want her with me. You know, she's helped me to get through med school. That ought to prove that she's devoted. It just proves she knows a good investment and nothing oh, more. Man, I'm not going to sit here and listen to you cut her down anymore. Of course, isn't she the least bit curious as to why you don't accept my money? <sighs> Becky does not know you're being supported. Russ, what does she know? <sighs> Only what is important. That I love you, and as soon as I start my practice, I'm going to start taking care of you. She thinks I work? <sighs> None of this matters to you. You don't like her, so why care what she thinks about you? Look, Mom, I haven't had too many head starts in life, but if Becky is what I need to get me through school and to get me through the hard times, then that is what I'm going to take. You're going about it all wrong. Well, you didn't leave me any blueprints, did you? Now, Becky is... Well, the way I feel about her is all I know. Oh, come on. You don't love her. You don't need her. Because you're obviously not willing to marry her. Not now. Someday. Oh, the only someday you're waiting for is the day you have the courage and security to tell her goodbye. Mom, Becky is staying with me. If you can't get used to that, you can say goodbye. Did you see this? What's that? It's a request for the resurfacing of the parking lot and sidewalks at Hollister Square. Impossible. Carpenter's remodeling already. I mean, you don't put the sidewalks or the parking lot in there until after the construction. Well, Carpenter applied for the permit himself. He has already started. Let me see that. Let me see that. I see this. Add that to the already unexplainable plumbing problems, and what do you get? Harassment. Another trick to get Martin and the rest out. Well, I'll say one thing. You were right about Carpenter. Now we got him, huh? Gene, it is not our job to get anyone. You're not going to do anything about this, Sam? There have been no complaints. Look, Martin is on his honeymoon, and the other people in Hollister Square don't know what's happening. And we're not sure either. Besides, we are not here to arbitrate. We work within the system. Well, it's time that that changed. Oh, and you're going to be around here long enough to see that it does change? <laughs> I talked to Scott last night, and I turned down the job. Looks like I'm digging in here to stay. Well, you make it sound like this is some kind of ditch. <laughs> well, it can be sometimes, lady. You know, well, I, I mean... am glad that you're staying. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, <laughs> give me a hug. Wow, I tell you. Sam, there's yes. an architect named Simpson waiting outside for you. OK. Hey, Jean, how's it going? Please, come on. You don't want to know. Yes, I do want to know. I've been trying to figure it out all morning. She just doesn't carry herself like a cleaning lady, Russ. I'm sorry. All right. Mom has someone paying for her living expenses. I've never met him. And it's not like you think nothing cheap. This guy just cares, that's all. Well, how long has he been... Uh... Caring. Pretty long time now. And look, she doesn't like to talk about it, and I don't ask too many questions about it. It's a sensitive spot with Mom. Now, I made it through to Kingsley on a scholarship. And I got out of that deal with uh, Cardello, right? By myself, nobody helped me there. And I'm going to make it through med school without a student loan, so don't you worry about anything. You mean every, everything you told me about your mother, the cleaning lady it stuff... It solved and... more problems than it caused. Does that make it right? Oh, come on, don't moralize with me, Beck. You know who it is, don't you? Your mother's financial guardian. It's your father. It has to be. I never met my father. Yes, you did. He ran out on you in grade school. I never that... met my father. As long as I can remember, Mom and I have lived alone. If it's any consolation, that's it. No more lies. I was going to tell you sooner or later anyway. Look, Beck, 
There's a lot of kids running around this campus who come from neat little two-car suburban colonial homes. Now, if I don't want any of them knowing that I, that I was found on a doorstep somewhere, well, that's my choice. You were found on a doorstep? No, I wasn't found on a doorstep. I'm trying to tell you my past wasn't quite as typical as yours. I was adopted when I was six. You call that typical? Two parents, brothers and sisters. They weren't mine. <laughs> Fine, let's sit here and top each other's disadvantages. All right, all right, now. all right. Look, be a little understanding, okay? I mean, you're coming from out of left field with all this Becky, stuff. What do you want me to say? You don't know how much I worried about some joker coming from the old neighborhood and enrolling at Kingsley. Besides, I told most of those stories because of Miss Davidson. Okay, so who's your real father? I mean, your mother must know. Mom hardly knew him. He was killed in Korea. She didn't lose much sleep over it. Well, then who's paying the bills? I mean, who's supporting her? Why? Or why else? Mom is not like that. Don't you ever think of her like that. She's not being kept. She is not being used. All right, okay, fine. Let's leave it at that, okay? Uh, I'm not going to pressure you because... You're just gonna give me, you're gonna stop giving me answers, or if you stop giving them to me, you're gonna start making them up. Besides, I have something much more frightening to deal with. A volleyball quiz. Russ, there, there's a lot more to this than you're telling me. It's gonna come out sooner or later. Yes. City Ordinance 52, Section B. Applicant is obligated to complete the work within as short a time period as reasonably possible. Any delay causing the general public undue discomfort or distress shall be just cause for revocation of the permit. Pay dirt. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Dear Mr. Charles Carpenter, happy holidays, turkey. What's this? You will be proud. I was doing some research on the city ordinances and I found Public access lots and sidewalks. I'm sending this to Carpenter, and I also quoted the ordinance in there. I see. Mm -hmm. Jane, didn't we discuss the matter this morning? But that was before I found the ordinance, so Sam. No, the point was that it is not our business. Now, I appreciate your investigative talents, but let's use them somewhere else. Uh, but hey, 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 but now we're for sure that he's breaking the law, so we're just going to look the other way? We don't know that. It says in the ordinance, in as short a time period as reasonably possible. Carpenter's going to drag that out until Martin leaves. Well, you wouldn't care one way or the other if it hadn't been for Carpenter's games with... Cardello in court? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, well, who's going to stop him? The IRS or the FBI, but not Y-O-U. Now stop playing Marshall Dillon. Sam, we're supposed to be protecting the public. Well, when the public comes walking through that door, then maybe we will do something. But I will not have you using your bias against Carpenter to dictate the workloads of this office. Where do you draw the line between bias and foreseeing trouble? I told Scott that I would take this job because I'd like... Pardon my nobility, but because I want to help the town. Well, just don't hold that over my head. What? your decision to stay here. You will stay here under my conditions or you can leave because of your own conditions. That letter does not have my authorization. Send it and you will be dismissed. Excuse me. Dr. Greeley's office, please. Uh, yeah, this is Becky Hewitt. I need to reschedule my appointment. Well, any morning is fine. Yeah, that, that's fine. Only this time, um, Dr. Greeley will be there, right? I mean, no stand-ins or anything? Okay. All right, that, that's good, yeah. Thank you.
Hello, Becky. May I come in? Please. Sure. I'll come right to the point. Tell me what you want from Russ. What do, you mean, what, what do I want? Becky, I told you I hate small talk. Now, please, be open and honest with me, and we'll both be better off. Okay. I want his love. I never ask for anything more. Then you're asking for too much. What I'm going to say may be hard to take, but you have to know what he told me. Russ has no intention of marrying you. As a matter of fact, he's trying to find a way out of this situation right now. I'm sorry to have to be so candid, but if Russ won't level with you, I will. When did he tell you all this? This morning. He told me that you two had a quiet conversation and that you were considering our living together. Quite obviously, that's not the first lie he's told you. I don't really have anything against you personally. It's easy to see that you've been misled, as I was misled when I was your age. And I wish someone had confronted me with the facts, as I'm confronting you. Leave, Russ. Do it now. I'll explain. Russ said that he told you that he was staying here. And I believe him. And I'll tell you something else. I don't believe for one minute that Russ's real father was killed. You're the liar.